Rumor reached Panama of fabulous treasures found in the immense city of Tenochtitlan, which had been easily acquired by a band of conquistadors under the command of Cortes. Francisco Pizarro, one of the Panama landowners, a one-time illiterate swineherd, began planning a campaign that would bury the greatest empire of pre-Columbian America. But unlike Cortes, the lone conqueror of Mexico, Pizarro looked for companions. A union of three was concluded. Pizarro, Diego de Almagro, and Fernando de Luc, all of whom were from Panama. The latter stayed in Panama to prepare provisions and protect the group's common interests against the Spanish colonial powers. The other two set sail on two ships they had purchased. In November 1524, Pizarro reached the mouth of the Viru River, following its course along the shores of what is now Colombia. It was a dismal territory of marshes, its tropical air oppressive and alive with gnats, a place where there was no trace of a human presence. Lack of nourishment soon became a problem, too. Seeing that serious peril threatened his expedition, Pizarro decided to go ashore and send the ship to the not-too-distant Pearl Islands for provisions. It was seven weeks later that the ship returned with food. By that time, about 40 men had starved to death. The feeble conquistadors continued on their way south until they came across an apparently deserted village, later called Punta Queimada, on a small mountainous peninsula. Just as Pizarro decided to settle here, natives attacked his squad, killing many soldiers and injuring him. In spite of this plight, the Spaniards found some gold which they took back with them to Panama. In the meantime, Almagro, having followed in the tracks of Pizarro's expedition, landed on the very same peninsula and even captured Punta Queimada. He reached the mouth of an unknown river which he called San Juan. Then, finding no more trace of Pizarro, Almagro also turned to the north. On Chicama, on the Isthmus of Panama, the two conquistadors finally met. 